Ah, graphene, this wonder material that we've been hearing about for such a long time now. We've heard that graphene's going to lead the next tech revolution. We've heard that graphene's going to change the world. And yet, the same question still remains. Why can't graphene make it out of the lab? And whatever happened to graphene? The thing is, though, the graphene that we've been dreaming of might be closer than you think. Next year, 2026, Hydrograph Clean Power is expected to open their new graphene production facility in Texas. But why is Hydrograph going to be different? Well, it's because of their patented Hyperion Detonation Synthesis technology. So let's break this technology down. Graphene is pure carbon and one layer of carbon atoms. The graphene produced by Hydrograph is described as a few layer graphene with three to nine layers, that is turbostratic. That means there's space in between those layers. This space is important as it allows the graphene to function more effectively. This production process occurs via explosion synthesis. A hydrocarbon gas, such as acetylene, is pumped into a steel chamber with oxygen. This mixture is then ignited with a spark, resulting in graphene powder within just a few milliseconds. The great thing is, this equipment is able to produce graphene cost-effectively, it's modular, and uses many off-the-shelf parts. That means this company will be able to produce large amounts of graphene to meet the demands of customers, such as data centers. To understand how graphene can be utilized in data centers, we need to look at how data centers work and what their purpose is. So simply put, a data center is a facility that processes, stores, and distributes digital information. They provide service from everything to large websites to AI systems by keeping data accessible and secure. For functionality, there are five main components of data centers. These would be the servers, networking equipment, storage systems, power infrastructure, and climate control infrastructure. The server's role is to perform computational tasks, host applications, and store data. The networking equipment role is what keeps servers, devices, and users all connected. The storage systems are just simply used to store data. The power infrastructure is what gives electrical power to the center, including systems to prevent power interruption. And the climate control infrastructure is what keeps all the equipment cool. Now let's look at each of these components and see how graphene can improve them. Servers are the workhorse of the data center and they get hot. And we're gonna be talking a lot about heat because graphene has fantastic thermal conductivity. A peer reviewed study released in September of Hydrograph's graphene showed that their ink coating can improve heat transfer coefficient of copper by 152%. If this technology was incorporated into servers, we would see higher clock speeds and reduced resistive losses. Another benefit to the servers is EMI shielding. Metal cases provide this protection when necessary, but it can be expensive and heavy. Yet graphene can perform the same task while being lightweight and affordable. Networking equipment could be improved with graphene nano antennas. They would enable wireless communication directly between components. This would reduce the need for wired connections and would allow for quickly reconfigurable links. As telecommunications moves forward towards 6G, the demand for these antennas will grow. Graphene antennas operate very well in high frequency terahertz band while conventional antennas will begin to struggle. Storage systems can benefit from graphene by taking advantage of another one of its great properties, lubrication. HDD platters could be coated with graphene enhanced lubricant, reducing wear while extending drive life and reliability. Utilizing graphene and RAM would also benefit the storage systems by offering faster read write times and reducing power use. Power infrastructure is going to see benefits because of graphene's great electrical conductivity. Copper is the longtime favorite for electrical transmission because of its relatively high conductivity. But there's an Achilles heel. Remember how we were just talking about graphene improving thermal conductivity? Copper loses its conductivity as it heats up, and that happens a lot. So if we could improve its heat transfer coefficient by 152%, I think that would help. Because of AI, power systems in data centers are being pushed to the limit. So supercapacitors could use some help. Supercapacitors make sure that power is immediately available when it's needed. They have fast charge discharge cycles and respond nearly instantly. Graphene superconductors are already on the market and can improve mostly all properties of a supercapacitor, including improved charge discharge times, improved energy storage, and longer lifespans. The last system we need to talk about is climate control infrastructure, and of course we're going to talk about heat. All those copper pipes used in the AC units, we can coat them and improve their heat transfer coefficient by 152%. 
but we also need to think about the fluids in those HVAC systems. Just a small amount of graphene, less than 1%, mixed with the fluid in a cooling loop can drastically improve its performance. The other thing we could do is coat the AC unit sitting outside with a graphene enhanced paint to reduce corrosion and increase their lifespan. Now with all these systems showing great improvement from graphene, when will we actually see it in practice? Hydrograph is expecting to begin their production in 2026, and we can expect them to ramp up production substantially throughout 2027. So from an availability standpoint, we will be there within a couple years. But what about actually applying it to all these systems? Some of these applications have been proven to work in the real world already. Graphene supercapacitors are already available, and some of the other systems I mentioned, like anti-corrosive, have already been seeing real-world testing being done on ships. So we have already been using graphene, just not at full scale. So it's definitely a short-term outlook from a technological standpoint, and with so many new data centers being built and opening within the end of the decade, it's only a matter of time. Now, what about costs? Hydrograph's graphene will cost between $250,000 and $800,000 per ton, depending on the intended use. The graphene we will see on the higher end of that spectrum will be used in high-tech systems and... On the lower end of that spectrum, we will see things like simple coatings and composites. And while that might sound high, we need to look at how much graphene a data center will actually need. So I did some math to see what it would take to coat all the copper in a data center with graphene. And for my equation, we're doing a medium-sized data center, which would have about 2,000 tons of copper. If all the wire was 28 gauge, that would mean we'd have about two and a half kilometers squared of surface area to cover. For density, we're going to say that it's three grams per centimeter cubed, which would be a heavier oxide rich film. For thickness, we're going to say it is 10 micrometers thick, and we'll give the mixture a 10% weight of graphene. This would mean we need about 7,500 kilograms of graphene, which equals about 8 tons. So if we use the median number of the lowest price graphene produced by Hydrograph and their highest, it gives us $525,000 per ton. When you add all this up, it shows that a data center will have to spend over $4 million to include this graphene. So is that cost effective for the data center? If you take a data center that costs $400 million, this is just a 1% increase in cost. But as we talked about earlier, the heat transfer coefficient of copper improved over 150% with a graphene coating. So it's tough to break down exactly how much percentage-wise more efficient that'll make the data center, but it's certainly going to be more than 1% increase in efficiency. And we also need to remember that savings won't only come from operational costs. You need to look at the initial capex spending when building a data center. With graphene-enhanced components, you'll need less components overall, as fewer components will be able to do more. And existing data centers can benefit from this as well without a major overhaul. Just the HVAC components of a data center take up 3% of all the copper. This could provide huge performance enhancements with a minimal investment. I probably spent a little too much time there rambling about copper, but anytime I talk about the graphene produced by Hydrograph, it just leads me down a rabbit hole. I don't think it'll be long till we see the potential of this wonder material and it comes to market. You can check out um, Hydrograph Clean Power on their website and see some other cool products they've been working on, such as graphene actuators. There is another YouTube channel, J. Taylor Media, who has interviewed the CEO and lead scientists um, talking about the company, and there's a lot of great info there. But anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and feel free to leave a comment if I miss something or if you like something or disagree with something. And subscribe as well if you like this because I'm going to try and produce more videos like this to educate people on the potential of Hydrograph.